Hi, Dougie Burt from Doug Burt's Tackle World. Uh, last night we did a seminar on jewfish fishing and I'm sorry about the sound, it was horrid. So we're back to using the uh, newer phone, <laughs> not the old phone. And um, so this is now going onto YouTube, so you'll be able to watch it over and over again and it'll be a lot clearer and my voice will be a lot easier to hear, even though it's always muffled, it's just natural, sorry. Uh, but what I'm going to talk about is jewfish fishing. So what you didn't pick up last night, hopefully pick up now. And for those of you that are new, welcome along and uh, and please enjoy what I'm trying to teach you here and please use it in your own time to catch lots of fish. Okay, here we go. So Jewfish, Mulloway, Silver Slabs, um, they have a thousand names, um, but I just like calling them Jewies. Uh, they're one of my favorite fish to catch, so they go hard. Uh, they're, they're a beautiful eating fish, a beautiful looking fish, a beautiful photographic fish. And um, and when they're on, they're on. They really bite hard. It's, it's, they school up like a school of herring. They just really school up. So uh, great fish to catch when they're in the in the numbers. So the best time to catch in the year is in the year is generally May, June, July. August not too bad. Um, we're talking on the beaches. We're talking in our bars and seaways, and we're talking rock walls and offshore on the local reefs. Um, I have caught two fish out to 140 meters, 138 meters. Uh, and I'm talking big ones, like 15, 20 kilo ones. Um, I have heard of one wrecks out to about 180 meters, but generally speaking, they tend to be within 50 meters and especially around that sort of 25 to 40 meter depth is where they, they seem to like out the front of the coastal bars and rivers and that sort of area. Um, they like quite pinnacle area or structure area. Uh, artificial reefs are extremely good for jewfish for um, bringing in the jewfish to breed. And I really um, appreciate every artificial reef we can get along our, our coastline. Um, please do more. Anyhow, uh, we'll talk about the gear. So the gear I'm using for rigging up is, um, I use Shinto hooks. These are really, really good hooks. They're Japanese steel, they're extremely sharp. Um, they're very similar to Gamakatsu's, but are quite a bit cheaper. Um, so the size I use depends on um, where I'm fishing or what bait I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing um, like small yakkers or herring um, or silver biddies, little mullet, and even pilchards, I like to use about a 6 0. The reason I don't go 5 0 or 4 0 is because Jews have a big mouth, and if you get something at least 10 or 15 kilos, a 4 0 hook will still work, but um, they're just not the same as using a 6, 7, or 8 0. So I use a 6 0 in that scenario. 7s and 8s. Oh, well, sevens I use generally, that's one of the most popular size I use, and that's the size we'll be rigging up tonight. The seven O's are a really good size for using on, on your standard size yakkers, slimies, um, tailor, and mullet. You know, fish that are up to that, up to that say 30, 35 centimeter size. Um, if I'm using decent sized tailor, like 40 centimeters, or decent sized mullet, like 40 centimeters, or even big pike, um, and fish like that, I'll use an 8 0 uh, just to match the bait better. And, um, and I'm always using around about 50, 60 or 80 pound leader. Again, it's all, it's all compatible. So 60 hooks I'm using like 40, 50 pound leader. Um, and 7 hooks I'm using around 50 to 80, uh, 60 to 80. And 8 o's I'm using 80 or 100 pound leader. The leader I use, uh, so that's the Shinto hooks there. So I'll quickly show you those. They're available in all tackle world stores. Um, they're just such a great hook, a fantastic product and made by a great company. Um, the next product we use is the, is the leader. So the leader I'm using is uh, YGK Gallus. YGK are the, one of the biggest makers in Japan of many different brands that you all know. Uh, they're the makers of their product. Uh, they they, they like make a lot of brand names that not only their own name, but this is their own product. So YGK. Uh, the, the reason why I like it, like this is 80 pound folks. It's just ridiculously soft. Um, but it's ridiculously tough. So it's like 20 times more abrasion resistant than normal fishing line. And, and it's like a hard line in strength um, in your uh, leaders, leader material. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the toughness of fluorocarbon, only fluorocarbon has that toughness, no other line does, even hard lines. Um, but it does have super tough toughness for its um, uh, um, agility. Anyhow, I think about it, it's super thin. This is 80 pounds. Um, it's like, well, I don't know, it doesn't give me a thickness unfortunately, but it's probably similar to 40 or 50 pound mono, but a lot softer. But it's actually 80, very strong. Um, the 50, 
uh, which I use um, on the 6 hooks is, uh, is even obviously more thinner, more softer and, uh, and extremely thin. Uh, the other product I use when I'm fishing, besides the bait and the rod and reel, are the sinkers. So these aren't available all around Australia unfortunately and, and maybe there are local guys starting to do it but they're just an egg sinker um, but they're Lumo. They've got Lumo coating on them, they're extremely um, good in the dark. I'm going to show you in a moment um, at the end of the video how, how they glow. Um, I don't know if the glow attracts the fish, but I definitely think that it is better than not having glow and we've proven that point over and over and over. So we use it for sample fish and we use them for everything, but they're extremely good on, on the jewies as well. Um, I like to keep my baits pinned to the bottom for jewies, okay? I don't like to have them sitting at the back just waffling around. Kobe and stuff are a different scenario, but for jewies, straight down. I'm trying to get my line pretty well vertical behind the boat, a little bit of an angle maybe at the most, not out there like that. I, I find I don't get many bites and I don't get many jewies when it's too much of an angle out the back of the boat, um, unless I'm at anchor maybe. But uh, when I'm drifting, I try and keep it straight down. And most of the time, 90% of the time for jewies, I'm drifting or 99% of the time. Um, so if I'm fishing in 25 meters or in the seaway where it's ripping out, I'm using like a three or a four ounce. If there's no current, no wind, and it's just straight down anyhow, I just want enough weight to hold my bait on the bottom without him swimming away from the jewies. Scared as. So I'll use a two ounce or something like that, or an eight ball. Uh, so that's my sinker there. My sinker sits directly on top of my uh, snelled hook rig. So it sits right on top of the, of the fish's head. I don't use a swivel. I find if I use a swivel, it gets tangled up and caught up all the time. The fish swims around, the sinker's on the bottom, he swims around the 50 meter leader and gets wrapped around. And, and to be honest with you guys, you don't have time to waste untangling that. You, you want to get down there and have a fish in the, your bait in the zone and you want to catch fish. You don't want to be stuffing around, especially during bite time. Um, so keep your bait down, pinned on the bottom, near the bottom. And um, if you're fishing a really heavy structure, you might wind it up one turn off the bottom, which is a metre off the bottom. And the two is will still take it quite easily. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you real quickly how to snell the hooks onto this 80 pound leader here. So I have to throw on my glasses. So here, so I'm using two seven O's right here. And what I'm gonna do, I pass it through the top of the um, first hook and my lead is about 25, 30 centimeters long. You will be able to see it's not done a little bit slower at the end, so just watch it again. It'll be another version of it, but the same thing, uh, but in a slower, uh, slower scenario. So I just wrap the hook behind, the line behind the hook. I then just um, hold it with my, with my thumb and just go round and round and round. Four or five times. Six maybe if I'm lucky. Go back through that first loop we made. And it's just on the, the line like so. You can see it on the hook there maybe. You'll see it definitely later on the on the slow, slower version of it. Um, then the top here, I do like a daggy uni knot, which is like a, I don't know what sort of knot, just hangman's noose. <laughs> but uh, it never, ever fails me, never, ever. Okay, it doesn't matter if I'm fishing for um, um, brim whiting, flathead, uh, or or the biggest fish out at the sea. This is the only knot I use. So you again, you'll see this done slowly later as well. But over the top, round, round, round six times or whatever, up through that first loop, pull it up, I wet it, slide it back down, pull that tag tight, and that's my rig there. Trim that off and leave about a eight mil little tag on the end there, that's enough. So that's my rig there, folks, okay? And when I put it to bait, which I'm gonna show you in a minute here, um, let's pull this leader off here first though, sorry. So my meters, my leaders are around about uh, about two meters long. If I'm using an overhead, I actually run about four meters. And as I'm catching a few during the night, whatever, sometimes it hooks down the gut, and I don't want to. Have, again, time is the essence. <laughs> I don't have time to get the hooks out. He's dead, and I'm keeping his bags hanging out. I'll um, I'll definitely um, quickly put on another set of hooks. So because I've got so much leader, I just cut off thirty centimeters, whatever, and retie new hooks on. Very quick, quickly, I should say. So, 
My sinker just sits, as I said before, directly above the, uh, the fish. Right on his head. Oh, those hooks are sharp. <laughs> just like so. That's it. There's no, the fish can't, uh, the sinker's not like this, and, and it can't get caught on your line that's sitting like so, and you've got a swivel on there. You can't swim around your line and get caught up. Okay. It's you keep it in to keep the line straight. As I was just saying, gets caught up. Okay, so it just it just sits on the bottom and swims around. So this is how I rig my baits up. So I've rigged this bait up here. Again, you'll see this at the end of the video uh, when we've done it before and how slow we've done it. But my hooks sit in that there position. If you can see that. So I pinned him through the side here and the hook sticking out to the side. So a lot of time the Jews will come up and grab it. As soon as they close down, you're gonna get him in that corner of the mouth, generally speaking. Sometimes I'll inhale the whole thing and you'll get him the gills anyhow. But and the top here, I'll either put it at the top there, I'll just pop that out for a sec, or I'll pin it through just in front of his eyes there like that. Okay. And that's my live yakka, slimy pike, tailor. Everything's that same hookup style. Make sure you've got plenty of lead on there. As you can see, that's quite long. And this one here is quite long between the hooks. You need plenty of slack. Because if you get that tight and it's and it's bent like that in the in the current, he'll just spin. And it doesn't look natural. And the druid is so much in some way. You need what looks natural. So keep plenty of loose line on there. Okay, put that fish back there for a sec. Now the other thing that I do, I then so I've rigged up my rig. I haven't put my bait on yet though, but we just showed you how to put the bait on. Um, but what I'll do next is I do an improved Albright. I, I don't do much in the way of fancy knots, GT knots, uh, or any of those fancy knots. I'm, I'm old school and my knots has never failed me and I never see a reason to change. Uh, you guys can do what you want to do, but I don't have time to be out there um, tying up knots when I'm fishing, especially in the dark, when I'm chasing jewies. So we are chasing jewies this scenario. Maybe different if I'm out popper fishing. Um, but what I do is I just loop up around about uh, 15 or 20 centimetres of line there, 50, uh, 80 pound line. Got my 50 pound leader, go straight through the centre here, pull it through about similar length to this piece here. And it's through the centre there. I grab it and grab that like, like a pair of scissors like that. And I'll just wrap it over the top. Going back up over what I just did, gone down about eight or ten times, gone back up about eight or ten times, gone through the loop, wet it, pull it up, push that up to the end there like so. Again, you'll see this in a lot closer demo at the end, but the main objective is I want to show you how strong it is, it locks right in beautifully, and how quick you can tie it when you're out fishing, which is probably around about 15 seconds, I'd reckon. It's not now because we're playing around, but when I'm out fishing, I'm not doing this sort of stuff. I'm just like, boom, 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 get it back out there. So it's very quick. And I'd have to say for me, it's about 99% um, um, doesn't, doesn't break. I trim that tag off as close as I can to the braid, which I'll show you later on in this video. And I leave about a four mil, five mil tag on the end of the top there. And folks, that's it. And the type of rod I'm using, I generally like to use like a 10,000 size reel or 6,500 using a pan slam or something like that. Um, but in a Shimano or Daiwa, in, in, yeah, using like that sort of 8, 10, 12,000 size reel. And uh, the rod length of the rod that I'm using is, um, so the rod I'm using is like a sort of, if you can see that, like a, this is actually a, um, one of the Shimano. Oshia series stitch bait rods, but around that um, 30 to 50 pound rod, or even heavier if you're using 80 pound line. Um, I do use also heavier, like a Saragosa 20,000, um, if I'm getting done. So it sits there, it's got 80 pound braid, it's got the 100 pound leader on it. And uh, if I'm getting smoked by some of the spots we fish around the Gold Coast here, there's big uh, concrete artificial pipes that they can swim through. I need to pull them out. Some of those fish can be a metre, 30, metre, 40 in length and around that 20 to 30 kilo size. You need to stop them. And I can get down 100 pounds a lot of the time too, but um, I've got a lot better chance than I have on my lighter outfit. But um, that 
that's my rig. Yeah, so I just want to show you how, to, how you do it when you're fishing. So that's the rig. We've rigged up the rod, we're ready to roll, put the bait on. So now, I, as I, when I pull up to my spot, I, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, before I even get and do anything, I turn the motors into neutral. I'm going to drift and I'll find out my drift pattern. It's in, in all fishing, it's so important to have your drift right. And if you haven't got it right, um, you, you're drifting, you're missing the fish. And uh, even good guys still miss fish because sometimes the wind can change a little bit. Just move, it'll go from that direction to that direction. Instead of going that way, you're going to go this way and you miss the fish. So it's a bit of uh, give and take. If you're lucky enough to have a spot lock on your motor and got an electric motor and there's not much uh, um, current, then I'd use that for sure. Please remember that spot lock motors are great, but they're not that great in current. They work hard and your line's just gonna go boomba out the back, but they're really good when it's windy and, uh, and no current or not much current. So they are holding the position, it's a bit rocking around the wind, but um, they definitely work really well in that situation. The bad point is if you're on some of these marks and you lock yourself on them and this guy's drifting over them, arguments start. But anyhow, I'll stay out of that one. It's probably as bad as anchoring up on it. Uh, so anyhow, I've worked out my drift. Next thing I do is I grab my rod and I just check my drag. Uh, and I want a fairly tight drag. I want to stop those fish from going through those concrete blocks down below. All that reefy area that's got a really sharp edge on it. And uh, so I set my drag fairly tight. Like, I mean, like that, like tight. And, uh, and then I really got my bait. Okay, got my bait, he's live, he's ready to go. I've worked out my drift, I've gone up past the, the mark. Um, I know I'm gonna come back exactly this way. And then I drop my line down. I might just flick my bait away a bit from the propellers because I always keep my motors going the whole time. Keep my sounder going the whole time. Um, they don't care about sounders pinging, maybe at three kilowatt they might, but generally speaking, they don't really care. And they don't care about the motor noise either. Um, and if you, ha I have noticed though, if you've got motors, a lot noisier than obviously electrics, but if you've got the outboards with the spot lock on the outboards, um, and you've got a couple of 250 horsepowers, <laughs> and you've got a bit of current, they're, they're a bit noisy and rumbly, and I think that may scare them a little bit, especially if fishing in like 20 metres of water. So in that scenario, you better probably turn them off and just drifting and putting up with the current, maybe just reversing back every now and then. Uh, so anyhow, my motor's going, I, I'm drifting, I'm on the spot, I'm just about to come onto it, the bait's starting to come up on my sound, I'm always watching my sound looking back, and I'm always watching my track marks. Please always learn to run a track, your tracks all the time on your sound, on GPS, sorry. It is so important that you know your track. And generally, uh, if you haven't got the spot marked on there, or even you might be 30 metres away from the spot and you get a, a fish on, uh, please just get someone to quickly put an icon on the screen. Because sometimes they're schooling up away from where they should be. And um, at least next time you go back around, you know to go a bit further again and be prepared to be ready at that spot way before your other spot, if that makes sense. Um, so anyhow, so I'm fishing away. And the bite of a dewy is, um, it's quite uh, distinct. So your fish is always rattling, but when there's a fish, a big fish about to jump him, um, it may fear, get a bit of fear and obviously start to flicker a little bit. You think oh, this live is gonna be funny. And then you'll feel it's always like a grating, groping type feeling. And it's like bite, bite, bang. And that's the normal bite uh, of a dewy. And that third, bite on the bang, I just strike it and I hit it and I go hard and I try and pull it up. Um, I don't want to um, play around with him and the gear I'm using is, uh, is, is the idea of it to so get, get him out of his hole or out of where his safety is and uh, get him up as, as much as I can off the bottom. Um, they will pull hard of course and once you've got him turned and he'll do a couple more runs but generally Joey's after a little bit they'll, uh, they'll give up and they'll float to the top belly up. And uh, when you gaff him, just do a gaff shot in the head or the shoulder area and straight into the boat. Um, I'm gonna take a quick photo of what you're gonna do. If you wanna let the dewy go, um, don't get up as much. You may get bricked on the bottom though, but um, enjoy him and, uh, and play him to the top and then take your photos real quick and then let him go again. Um, as long as you don't put him up too fast in too deep a water, um, they will go back down, no problems at all. Um, you're only allowed to keep, in Queensland, we're only allowed to keep uh, two dewies per person and that's Mulloway Jew. Uh, and the minimum legal size has to be 75 centimetres. And um, just remember that, folks, when you're fishing. Because uh, when they're on the bite and there's only two of you fishing, you'll have 
sometimes you'll get four fish in, in 30 minutes and you got to go home so don't um, don't get in trouble um, yeah so that's about the, the side of the, the, how you do Jew. The only other thing too is when you fish around seaways and, and walls and around natural bars, um, they will be in the deeper water of the bar. So if it's um, 40 foot deep and everywhere else around 20, they'll be in that deeper channel right down the bottom and uh, keep your lines down the bottom. You may need to use a bigger sinker. Um, there are guys that actually anchor up in six knots of current in, in the lead up to the bar, inside the bar, in the deeper area, across structure or just in the deeper area. And, uh, and they'll drop their line back with a pound or two pound of lead um, and they'll use a patternoster with about a half a metre uh, and snell hooks hanging off the patternoster up about a metre off the bottom and the fish will just be swimming around and uh, the live bait that is and, and that's how they catch their fish um, you can use a downrigger as well um, downriggers also work extremely well as well um, when you use your downrigger though make sure your rod's loaded up the whole time if you're at anchor and uh, if you remember, the, most of the time with the downrigger, it's when the rod pops up that you get the fish, not when the uh, rod bends over more. It doesn't do that much. It sort of pops out of the, out of the clip or out of whatever. Yeah, so um, that's how you do it. And I don't really have much else to tell you. Um, the lead is good, the line's good, the, that's all good, thing is good, bait's good. So hang around at the end of this. Uh, please watch how we do the knots in a lot slower version, a lot closer, so you can actually see right there what we're doing um, and get out there and enjoy it. Just one thing I'd like to recommend too is just dewy tides and, and moon phases. Um, I'm a bit of a moon guy, so um, when the moon's in the sky at night, the dewies will bite. Um, the moon's in the sky during the day, they'll bite during the morning. Okay, so if you've got um, the moon rising at about 5.30 in the afternoon or six o'clock, um, that's when they'll bite. That's the best scenario, which normally means around, around about the high tide as well. And um, if the moon goes down at say um, four in the afternoon and you've got a dark moon, because the moon's already gone down, um, you're not gonna catch much that night, I can assure you. So fish the moon, and, uh, and if it's early morning, make sure there's a bit of moon in the sky um, going down. I think to, uh, at the moment, yeah, it's during the morning, so you can fish the morning for dewies. But nighttime bites, afternoon bites, as soon as it gets dark, they just turn on, the, you get nothing, and then all of a sudden, wham, bam, they'll bite. But um, in the morning, they'll bite from the in the sky. Okay, thank you so much. Um, the reason why I'm using pink scissors too, by the way, is because um, your mates don't normally steal it. So I'll throw that in. And uh, good luck out there and enjoy it. And uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Pass me gas, please. Yeah, I got it. Okay, that's more one. That's more one. Yeah. That's nice though. Hold the rod. Nice. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you lost yours. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Liam. Thanks, mate. Is it, I think it's on, right? <laughs> huh? It's on? Re uh, is it red? red? light's on, yeah. 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 That's, that means it's on. Okay. Oh. That's, that's nice size as well. Perfect size eating. I'll take a picture, mate. I'll take it. A... Oh, you can... Oh, towards it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to stand in the light. Oh, face this way. There we go. It looks good. Do you want me to take it on my phone? Photo, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, folks, so now we're going to do the snell hook knot, which is joining the two hooks together. I pull through, as you can see there, I ran about 30 centimetres of line. I grab the line on the hook shank here and I hold it with these two fingers and then I wrap it over the top of the hook. Each time I go around, this finger here is holding it to stop from sliding forward. And this one here, as it goes around, it pulls it back up this way. About six times. And then I get this piece of line here and I pass it through that hole. 
I can see it. <laughs> there we go. And then pull it up tight, pull it tight. That's it. And then I get this hook here and I do a Dougie's Union knot, which is like a, not a knot you've probably never seen before, but I've placed the hook, as you can see there, that's a sharp, I ran about so far down the, down from the hook, about, uh, probably 12 centimetres. So we're using baits that are around about um, that sort of uh, 20 centimetres in size. So my line's about that long, I've held it here again, again, over the top. This time you don't need to hold it though. About five or six times, and I go back through that top loop. Pull it up, pull it up. Slide it down, it's gonna wet it before I lock it in tight. Then just set the hook in, like that. And I just, when I'm using the bait, I just wrap it around like so. And I trim this one here off. This is 80 pound, but it's super thin. Super soft, super nice, and it's a Gallus Absorber, which is a product by YGK in Japan. It's one of the nicest lines to work with, but um, it's 20 times more abrasion resistant uh, than normal uh, mono. So quite strong on the rocks and in the mouth of the fish. So that's it. So to rig the bait up, I'm gonna try to do that now as well. So this is my, say, live yakka, my live slimy. Which is obviously a slimy. What I'll do is I'll grab my hooks like so, and about this position here, so that's his dorsal fin, just so you can see it there. Um, what I'll do at about this position here, I sort of go in just where the blue line starts onto the silver line here. Go in and I dig the hook down quite deep, and then pop the hook out like so. On the fish and that's how that's sitting there like that okay then this hook here you notice i've got plenty of line to play with now on the live bait a lot of time i'll just go straight through here sometimes it pops out though when they're down on the bottom if you don't get a bite and you got to pull it back up sometimes that it that is dislodged but generally speaking um it'll hold in there really well but um that's going to work really well and the other way i would do it if it's a live bait take this out for a moment is that open his mouth up and I'll just stick it through here and out through the center of his body here like so. So you've got a hook facing this way, hook facing to the side. Um, the hookup rate is extremely good with this technique. Um, and yeah, he'll just swim around and um, won't have any um, distraction or any curvature because this is tight. If this is tight and it's too, uh, too tight to your hook, that's the sort of problem you're going to get. And he'll spin the current and the fish won't want to know about it. But when it's loose, he can do his whatever he wants without feeling any uh, resistance and looks very natural in the water. So, yeah, that's it. So just keep it there like that, that there like that, and away we go. All through the nose. Thank you. Hi, folks. Okay, we're going to do now the improved or bright knot. Um, I think improved means when we wind the line up over the leader and go back down again, that's the improved part. Otherwise, it's just an all bright knot. So what I've done is I've looped up my line around about 15, 20 centimetres long, 80 pound leader, YGK. And I've now got my 50 pound braid and I'm gonna thread it through that little loop there and I'm gonna hold the braid and the loop together and pull that through about similar length to this piece here. So these two pieces are now the same length. As you can see it's gone through the center there. Then I hold that and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it with my fingers like that and like a pair of scissors and hold it there. And I don't look out this side over here on my left hand. Now I'm going to wrap this piece of braid over the top. Like so. It's fairly tight, not too loose. Retaining a big loop on this end. I'm going to go up around about 10 times. And now I'm going to go back down over the top of this about 10 times. Doesn't have to be in any sequence, but obviously keep it flowing forward. It all sort of pulls up together at the end. When I get to here, I go through where I went in earlier. It doesn't matter if it goes that way, 
or that way, same zone, just lose half a turn. Then I grab it and I pull it through like that. Now I've still got that scissor action here. And what I do is I, I help push that up to the end while I'm pulling on the two bits of braid. So slide that up to the end there, right up to the end like so. And then I'll wet it. So I've just put a bit of spit on there. Then I'll grab two uh, good wraps on the braid and two good wraps on there. I'm going to really lock this in, folks. So I'll lock it in tight. And you see it'll pull up nice and tight like so. So now it's like super tiny, that not super tiny. And I promise you it will never, ever come undone. I've never, ever had one fail on me. So this is the important part. You must trim off this tag as close as you can get to the braid. The only time I've ever had it fails, I've trimmed too close and nicked the braid. Because I was wearing my glasses. Um, but what that does is it doesn't leave a tag, so it doesn't allow the braid to get caught from behind and stuck on that tag, which is what you don't want, okay? And then this fellow here, you can do a couple of little half hitches on the top here just to make that a bit more, uh, even more conical on the top, conical on the top. Uh, but we just trim that off around about with a six mil little tag on it. So that's the knot there, okay? It is super strong. And usually I just check at the end again, one more, one more big wrap. And I uh, just, it's strong as so, that's it. So that'll just pull straight through my guides on my rod. Um, if I'm casting lures, it'll cast out through the rod. Um, I don't have time to do GT knots like I talked about earlier. So this is it. This is what I'm doing when I'm out fishing. Very quick. I did it very slow for you guys. But you would have seen earlier when I was talking about the jewies how fast I did it. So um, that's how it works. Okay. Thank you very much.